What's up guys, my name is Josh, and today we're gonna to talk about imaging and soundstage. And I'm making this particular video for two reasons. One, I wanna see what you guys think about imaging and soundstage, and I'll explain more of that at the end of the video, so stick around for that. And two, I kinda of wanna talk about my understanding of imaging and soundstage. If you've been into audio, you probably know exactly what I'm gonna say, uh, but if you have a differing opinion about what it should be about, then I'd love to hear it in the comment section down below. And if you're new to audio, this might kinda of be something that you're like, oh, okay, now I get it, now, now I understand. And you know, even if that's just one or two of you, I, I'd love to be able to help out. That being said, let's go ahead and start with my definition of it. Soundstage is the perceived space, both forward and backward and left to right and how great and long and wide that area can be. And if we're using headphones as an example, like it will be in the majority of this video, we can kind of imagine soundstage as being like a sphere of, of sound around our head. Now, depending on if that is really tight soundstage, meaning closer to you, that sphere is going to be smaller. If it's wider soundstage, if it's larger soundstage, then that sphere is going to be further and further away, depending on how wide that soundstage is capable of appearing. So now that we have an understanding of what soundstage is, what is imaging? Imaging is the positional accuracy of a given sound within the soundstage. So I have two headphones, for example, here. One is the 668B, incredibly wide, soundstage, decent imaging given how wide the soundstage is, but these feel huge, they sound incredibly large. Whereas the DT1990 Pro and something that you'll see with a lot of studio headphones is they don't have particularly wide soundstage, but they do have very, very, very accurate imaging. Now we could talk about the trade-off that happens between soundstage and imaging, and uh, this is gonna be a really loose kind of understanding of this. Keep in mind, this is not stand for every headphone. There are headphones like the HD800, for example, that break the rules that I'm about to lay out here. But if you imagine soundstage as being the potential space that a headphone could sound like it's coming from, and imagine that as a rubber band, and then imagine imaging is a Sharpie that you took and you drew a small line on that rubber band. What happens when you take the rubber band from here all the way out here? That line, being the imaging, gets wider and more broad and becomes less accurate. Generally speaking, that is what's going to happen with very wide sounding headphones. They're gonna seem a little bit less accurate in terms of imaging because it was sacrificed to have that wider soundstage. Now, like I said before, the HD800s, from what I remember, and take that with a grain of salt because it's been about two years since I heard them, the 800s are very wide, but regarding imaging, they are very, very accurate. But generally speaking, with more intimate headphones in terms of soundstage, think like DT1990s, think uh, HD600s, 650s, 660s, you're gonna get extremely tight imaging, but not a lot of soundstage. Now, with, with most headphones, again, this doesn't apply everywhere. <laughs> and again, the HD800 kind of breaks this rule. Um, when you get really wide with soundstage, you tend to sacrifice a little bit of detail from whatever's coming really far away. But that tends to be kind of a consistent feature I tend to see with really wide soundstage headphones like uh, K712s. Very, very wide. Excellent for gaming because of that wideness, but not a very textured and detailed headphone, at least compared to something more intimate like the 1990s or like the 660s. Now, obviously we're talking about different classes of headphones, but you get the example. Now, here's the question I wanna pass on to you. In my reviews, I put imaging and soundstage kind of towards the end of where I talk about sound. The reason why I do this is because I think it, from my perspective as a reviewer, I have to look at every aspect of a headphone equally in terms of importance. The resonance of the headphone, the base of the headphone, the treble of the headphone, I have to pay attention to all of it equally so that I can assess it as a, a fair assessment. But if I was not providing information for people and I was on the receiving end like a lot of you are, what I wanna know is how important is imaging and soundstage compared to to the rest of the music. Is it incredibly paramount? Is it something that absolutely has to be there? If so, what do you prefer? Or is it kind of go on the back burner and you care about more of maybe vocal isolation or bass clarity or the overall feeling of the headphone a little bit more than you do the imaging and the soundstage? I'd love to know what you think in the comment section down below. Now, I'd also like to know if you prefer super wide soundstage or if you like something a little bit tighter, a little bit more intimate. Um, in the comment sections, I've seen both. I've seen people prefer the intimacy of, like I said, 660s and the uh, complete wideness of K712s. These LED socks are kind of designed to be a conversation and uh, I want to know what you guys think down below. So leave a comment, subscribe if you're not. Uh, 1990 review is coming out tomorrow and uh, thank you very much for watching. My name is Josh. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.